Hi, my name is Joshua and welcome to this video where we talk about payload update 3.51. In this update, there are a few new interesting features, a long awaited bug fix and an interesting addition to the documentation. So let's jump right in. The first thing we want to talk about is the UI update for the query presets. As, oops, as you can see here, I created a very simple collection that has articles and that are published or not published. And yes, here you can see it and they have enabled query presets. The new UI adds now this bar at the top of the, the search bar. If you enable the query presets, we can create a query preset. Let's say, or well, let's name this published, published. Let's save it and it's loading again and let's add actually a filter for published published equals true we save the change and we only see the published articles and have this query preset so this is already the change nothing spectacular a little bit easier to use let's go and a little bit easier to use and let's go to the next point. The next point in the list is the multi-tenant plugin. There have been uh, some interesting updates to this. If you're new to this, I set up this or actually this is the standard example repository that's provided to us by payload and this already has the multi-tenant plugin activated. Um, if you've not used it before, it basically allows you to separate documents in a collection by a certain type of user or by a certain time of customer or support multiple domains. And what has been added is the option first to add your own or more translations. Um, previously there was a tenant selector label and that has been deprecated and you can now pass this i18n object and then put in whatever text you like. So a tenant, for example, can be a different domain. So you can first change the label currently assigned, currently, oops, currently assigned domain, do, domain filter by domain. And if we save that and go to the web browser, there we actually have an updated. And as you see, this changes the labels for pretty much everything related to the tenants. Another interesting change that came to the tenant plugin is that we now can pass in pretty much a complete override for the configuration of the tenant field. What is the tenant field? Under the hood, payload attaches to every collection that is configured in the payload uh, in the tenant plugin a tenant field which is simply a relationship field which you can see here and previously the customization of this was very limited but now if we go to the config of the plugin we can pass here in here a tenant field and override pretty much everything of the relationship field what not we can see here so obviously you cannot override a type you cannot override if it has many this is handled by the plugin and in this case this would override the access on a global level but you can also configure this on a collection by collection on a collection by collection basis so if you want to have specific tenant fields or co collections that have a specific access configured, you can tenant field overrides and pass a very similar object right here. So here also you get a single relationship field config where you can pass or override the name, the label, pretty much anything you want. Let's come to the next point.
The next point on our list that we want to mention is a bug fix. And probably many of you actually came across this bug. It was raised by Harley back in January. And that is auto save hooks are not reflected in the form state. What does this mean? So actually, if you activate auto save for a collection and then have as described in this pull request, you have a field that has a hook that depends on the title or any other information that is updated with the autosave. The form state is not updated with the autosave. There's a really quick demo here. So we can see here the title is updated. It has been autosaved, but this computer title is not updated. So we actually have to manually refresh the page for the hooks to be executed and updated. But this has been fixed now. So as we can see here, you update the title, it has been auto-changed, and automatically the hooks have been called, and you don't have to manually reload the page for this to work. Okay, let's come to the last point I want to talk about in this update. There has been an interesting addition to the documentation, especially if you are more of a beginner in the whole payload ecosystem. And there has been addition of the troubleshooting docs, especially the dependency mismatches. So in the payload community, a lot of issues arose because of dependency mismatches. And as to not answer every single one of these requests manually, there's now been an addition to the documentation. And um, as you can see, there are also interesting tools you could use, for example, to check whether all the payload dependencies use the same payload version. Let's copy this really quick and execute it um, even in the example that is provided by payload. So if we, comp if we execute this, we see here every single package uses the 3.51 version of payload. This is very important because this is a big cause for errors. There are also more steps you can take to ensure or to fix errors that arise because of dependencies. They are all outlined here under doc slash troubleshooting slash troubleshooting. And yeah, I hope this was interesting to you. If you want to know more about payload updates or keep up to date with the latest um, things there are to know about payload, then subscribe to our channel and see you the next time.